Let's begin uh, with the law suit or the ruling by a California judge that, that, as I understand it, means that Apple will be losing a slice of its um, revenue pie to app developers who can now collect money directly uh, and not have to collect it through the Apple Store and pay a 30% cut Am I to Apple. Am I understanding that correctly? And how much money are we talking about here? So, yes, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. You are understanding this correctly. But remember, uh, this is just, you know, it's got 90 days to be implemented. I'm sure there'll be more legal action on it, because one of the things uh, that the judge, uh, Judge Gonzalez, did say is that Apple is not a monopoly. So I'm sure Apple will find a way to, to legally challenge uh, uh, the route. But let's not forget about one fact. So you have to break down the issue into two pieces. First of all, is this material to Apple? And secondly, the popularity of the App Store. So we did some quick back of the envelope sort of math. And if I take out a billion two of revenues from Apple, assuming that that's the impact, which I think is somewhere in the ballpark, Apple will stand to lose between three to four cents of earnings per year on an earnings base of $5.80 plus. So it is practically immaterial to Apple, this revenue. Mm -hmm. um, second point is, let's talk about the popularity of the App Store. Uh, so it is still by far the most popular franchise to put your apps on. If an app wants to be discovered, wants to be successful, the app developer, of course, has a very vested reason to be on this. Now, um, once you start to take away the steering laws and Apple has no slice of the in-app revenue, the motivation for Apple to put somebody on there decreases quite dramatically. There's simply no money to be made, let's face it. So that calls for almost a different model where Apple might charge a company that has potential for significant in-app purchases right up front, an upfront fee, a yearly fee, something of that nature, just to cut off that $1.2 billion impact that we were talking about. Or they might meet the app developer down the line and sort of reduce that 30% payout to make the impact more palpable to Apple. So that's so, the way we're thinking about that, it. That, that's really but very in, interesting. In effect, it's immaterial. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the bottom line here, is that even if it goes through, uh, and, and you're, you're telling us very clearly that, that there's more legal action on this trail to come here over the next 90 days, and you cite the fact that the judge did not uh, describe uh, Apple as a monopoly. So there's a lot more to come, that's number one. Number two, that even if it does happen, it does get verified uh, in court, uh, the, the, the uh, impact on Apple will be, quote, immaterial because it is so small. Joanna, let me turn to you. I'm not sure that there's, there's one element of this that I'm not sure I do understand, and, 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 and Harsh or, or Joanna, you can jump in here, but let me direct it to you, Joanna. Um, if I am a user of one of these apps that has in-app purchases, uh, and that revenue currently runs through the App Store, Am I going to have to change anything? I mean, I'm a creature of habit. And once I've signed up to have the payment taken through one way, I am very loath to change it so that yep. um, it, it would go a different route. Joanna? No, you're asking the totally right question for the consumer end. How does this impact us, right? On one hand, you could see it as possibly passing on the savings to us. If the developers no longer have to pay that 30% cut to Apple, then they could lower the price on in-app purchases, say mm -hmm. by 30%, and pass on that savings to consumers, right? Win for consumers, that's great. Will the developers all do that? I don't know. I think they could also see this as a way to make some more money. But yes, what they would also have to do to get that would be to implement their own payment systems, not going through Apple. And that seems to be what the Epic CEO is saying on Twitter about the response to this is that they feel that they want to have that level playing field, being able to use Apple systems for the cost that makes sense, which they believe is not the 30%. Mm -hmm. So um, this is all sort of what needs to play out. And, and as, as this conversation has proven, we have a lot of big questions still about how the legal route will affect what we actually get on our phones and in our hands. Mm -hmm. So Joanna, say that again, basically Epic wants to use, have the ease of use of Apple system just without paying them the, the toll? 
that's what I seem to infer from the from the tweets today from from Tim Sweeney. I, 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 I've seen some of their statements, which is basically they still want to continue to fight on this, that they are, I believe, I guess, just not uh, completely feeling like this was a win for them. I think that's been the big thing about this mixed verdict today. Who has really won? I mean, obviously, a lot more went to Epic than I think many thought. And there was a big win in terms of this uh, concession in the 30 percent and being able to steer out of those anti-steering and be able to direct people to their own payment systems and stores. But on the other hand, there's part here that says Apple's not a monopoly. Mm -hmm. And as Rush was saying, there is, is possibly a lot there that can go back and forth.